Do you think there'll be uh, more or less trash talking? Because more, do you think more? more. Even though we, oh, even though we'll be able to pick it up a little bit, like the mics will pick it up better. You think there'll be more? Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna pick up some foul stuff. <laughs> uh, based on what I've been hearing so far, and, and, and the things that I say that normally can't be heard with fans, they're gonna have to try to blurt out with crowd noise. They're gonna try to delay it, but uh, you're gonna hear a lot of. Uh, elite content is that is is the more trash talk because guys have to like amp themselves up more and there's the lack of i would imagine it's a little weird you don't get that just adrenaline boost of coming out to a packed house you have to kind of find it somewhere else so are they is that why it's more they're talking themselves into it a little bit yeah it's both it's like you psych yourself out you gotta trick yourself into like there's people here watch it ah, i'm hype i'm hype and then the other part is it's like AAU. It's like playing with your, your friends. Right. You know, you talk more trash against people you know, like your friends. And um, it's you score and it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got to like yell curse words and obscenities just randomly to kind of <laughs> pump yourself up. And then you like talk trash back and forth. And it's like they score and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hitting threes and then the other team scores. And then like you got somebody's scoring on a smaller player and they're walking down the court like, he's a baby. He's a baby. Get the baby out the road. Like, you just think, like random, random things. People are yelling out like, Benny Hanna, it's time to cook. <laughs> like, just random, random stuff. And then other things I can't say. So, I love it. So what you're telling me is that a team that might have the strongest bench mob actually has a huge advantage because they've got a massive cheering section for them. They've got like a little home court advantage. So out of the teams that you've seen, which bench mob is the best? I mean, we got a really good bench mob. Um, I've seen, I've watched a couple games on TV. Uh, the Lakers, they celebrate like every basket. Yep. They got dances. I've seen other teams like uh, choreography, like do choreography on free throws. They were like, some per somebody sits, somebody stands, mm -hmm. and then they move around. It's like a roller coaster ride. Like everybody's doing different stuff, I guess, to, to kind of stay engaged, stay locked in. And you just need that momentum boost. Toronto Raptors, we played them. We were talking like crazy the whole game. The ref had to stop the game and say, look, man, if anybody else says anything, uh, we're going to have to start throwing people out type of situation. So it was just fun. We know each other, but it's just fun to talk trash when it's an empty gym. There's nobody there. And you're competing. Like you're trying to win. And it, it becomes a little personal on the court. It's personal. And then when you leave, it's just business as usual. Yeah. Uh, who keeps calling the snitch line? Have you called it? I don't have the number. I've never been oh, a snitch. Oh, that's I'm... convenient. You don't have the number? Oh. Like, that sounds like you're denying too much. The yeah, no, yeah. they gave the number to everybody. I live my life, man. Hey, long as nobody's bringing any positives in here, I don't really care. Like, do y'all thing. Live y'all lives, man. Leave me alone. I stay I stay on my little corner suite. I'm ducked off out the way. I got my wine. I got my water. Uh, I got some organs finest. So I'm just enjoying my situation. Okay. Snitch line though, someone's uh -huh. calling it. Someone's calling the snitch line. Oh, people are definitely calling the snitch line. One hundred percent. I've heard about it. People complaining about people not wearing masks, and it's it's interesting, man. I, I'm not I'm not one to judge people. Man, everybody's gonna live their best life. I, as long as you're not coughing around me or potentially like exposing me to the virus, I don't care what you do. Just stay away from me. Let me stay in my little space. And live my life. Yeah, so maybe keep like an extra six feet between you and Michael Porter Jr. I feel like that might be a good idea yes. for right now. Um, have you had the snitch line called on you? Not that I know of. I mean, I don't know what you would tell on me for doing. Like, I'm just out here living my best life in the bubble. Mm -hmm. like, I feel like some teams have designated snitches where they say, okay, we need you to call up the two best players on every team that yeah. we play against. Or what about yes, calling the snitch line be like, CJ tried to dunk and he's not, he's not about that life. CJ he ran out of talent. <laughs> like, <laughs> he ran out of talent. Hit the rim hard. I'm a scorer, man. I get buckets, man. You That's do. Yeah. yeah. I listen. I think that um, I I've had a long stay woke. There's a gym in New York where uh, Mello, who we got to talk about, Slim Mello. He practices with a bunch of pros. I think you maybe have been there too. I'm convinced that the basket is bigger because everyone just like no one misses at that gym. But I've seen your training videos. Do you edit them? Do you make sure that it's always just buckets? Because it is it is incredible how good you look in your training videos. But that's everyone, I guess. I mean, I look good in games, too. But True, true. <laughs> yes, you do. But but what what's behind the training video? When you put out a training video, do are no, you like, let's it, keep that one out? Let's keep that brick out? 
No, I, I clip I clip all my stuff. So you'll see makes misses too, depending on what they catch. But we're such elite shooters that like even the worst player on the team is great in the empty gym. It's crazy. Like, yeah. Unbelievable how like locked in, how the mechanics, everything falls into line. If you if you catch the right person shooting for two, three, four minutes, they might not miss. So if you just record a one minute video on Instagram, it's one minute of just makes. It may be twenty makes in a row. Like I can make twenty five, fifty 60 shots in a row and if you clip it for one minute it's gonna look like i didn't miss because i didn't miss for one minute. right so i think that's the misconception fans get is that you watch center shoot like dwight howard can shoot threes javel mcgee if they enter gym by themselves eight out of ten yeah and you just see eight makes in a row and be like well why doesn't he do it in the game it's like well that's not his role that's not his job but he is capable there's so many players that are capable of doing things especially in a gym by themselves it's just more about opportunity and i think that you know, that gym, the, the gym that we play in the summertime, guys make shots because, for one, we don't play much defense at all. And for two, everybody's fresh. It's the summertime. You, you live in your best life. And there's no worries. Like, everybody just out there hooping. There's no plays being called. There's no there's no interviews after the game or, or none of that stuff. You just go out there and hoop like a child and then you go home. Yeah, the, the, I, I can't remember who said it once, but it put it all into perspective. They're like, the, the difference between the NBA and everything else is if you took the 10th best player on an NBA roster, they would be the best shooter on every single college team across the board. Yeah. In, uh, like Easy. without a doubt, like any any you know big men, small men, whatever it is, just pick the tenth best shooter on an NBA team, and they are the, they are the number one option for every single college team. Yeah, depending on what team, because obviously there are some players that are elite. Like you know, like if you want to went back to like put JJ right. Redick in college, right. or like a shoot college, like he's going to be the best shooter. But for for the most part, NBA players like the the last guy on the bench is like an animal, right? Like, just doesn't matter. Really, yeah. yeah. He's really, really just not playing. Right. So he just bought another animal. So yeah. h- how do how do the elite of the elite get ready that separates them from like the guys that might be the fifth or sixth best shooter on the team? Like mentally, do you do you meditate? What do you do to get in the mindset to go out there and not worry about all that shit and just execute yeah. the mechanics? Everything, man. Like I got my I read, man. Holy I shit. got my book. Whoa. See, play no- Damn, who are you trying to impress? Look, think about it. I'm in a bubble by myself. There's nobody here. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to in, improve my knowledge and overall understanding of life. But I think the it's that two percent to ten percent, right? It's the mental edge. It's the ability to lock in. It's the ability to focus. We all good. We all have talent. We all have the same resources. We got elite trainers. We all can hire chefs. We all can do those things. It's just about the discipline, and then the ability to be able to overcome obstacles, right? So, some people are great when everything's going well, when they're successful, when they're making shots, everything's great, everything in your life is going well. Some people can't handle the opposite. Failure, missed shots, media talking about you, your relationship might not be going well, family stuff might be going on, all that affects your performance. Some people have the ability to compartmentalize everything. Like, may Kobe rest in peace, he could compartmentalize everything. Like, when, when things are going well, when things aren't going well, they have an ability to lock in like that, like LeBron, Tom Brady, some of the elites, uh, Pat Mahomes, you can put him in the conversation now, like the switch that goes off to where down 25, down 28, doesn't matter because they still think they're the greatest. They still think they're unstoppable, still think they're the best. Some people waver. Some people get unsure of themselves. And that's why there's 2% of the elite. And then there's the 98%, the 99% that are really good, have the talent, have the ability, don't have the mindset. They don't have the drive or they don't have the discipline. Yeah. That makes sense. So, it, like, on a if you have a game and you warm up and you feel good, do you tell everyone on your team like this? It's this is me tonight. Like, make sure I get the ball. And and has that ever backfired? Have you ever thought that you had it and then it's like, whoa, whoops, don't have it. Thought I did. I've, I've had both both situations happen. I've made every shot in warm ups. Like, I've shot and like gone through my spots, my my routine, and not missed for like ten minutes. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be a good night. And I've missed every shot in the game. <laughs> I've gone through warm-ups and missed every shot. Like, I have to make 10 free throws in a row when I finish, two swishes. I go through, like, a, a series of swishes, makes, off the dribble, catch and shoot. I've gone through it, and I have a 20-minute slot. It's taken me 35 or 40 minutes. Like, I've been shooting in someone else's slot to try to finish. Right. Thinking it's going to be a terrible game. 40. So, like, it's – once you get in the game and you get into rhythm, like it's hit or miss, like things shift and change, but your, your, your mindset, my mindset never changes. Like I can miss every shot 
I could be 0 for 12, 13's going in. Mm-hmm. Miss 13, oh, 14's got to go in. Right. Miss 14, oh, that means I got to make 14 in a row. Like, it's only a matter of time before I say law of, law of averages. So, for me, that's how it's always been. But for some people, they're superstitious. They got to do this, they got to do that. Me, it's like I've tried everything just to throw off that mindset of I have to do this. Right. I can, I can take a nap or I can not take a nap. I can FaceTime my girl. I cannot FaceTime my girl, but I'm still going to be locked in and able to play. In in those pregame shootarounds, or just in practice in general, what is Dame's range like when he's like when he's going through his routines? Does he sit and do like 50 foot shots and just practice those, or what's what's that like? He can comfortably shoot from half court. Uh, he's strong. He's got like the wrist flexion is crazy. He's got a good dip. Um, he works on it. He knows how to get the proper arc on the ball and. He, it's almost like a set shot, but it's not for him because it's just like it's really effortless. He doesn't really jump. Yeah. It's like, but he he works on that stuff, and that and that's the thing. People at home watch and they're like, "Well, why do they do this or why do they do that?" And it's like we've all practiced everything that we do. I don't go out there and just experiment. I work on stuff and then I translate that to the game. It's like the pre-draft, the rough draft, to the final paper. So for him, he works on thirty footers. He works on forty footers. He works on step backs left, step backs right, just like the shot he hit against the Thunder. They literally had video of him doing that same shot in OKC the night before game one, yep. the night before game two, the night before game three. Like his trainer, Phil Beckner, shout out to Phil, he actually just had him somebody take a picture. And he's like, I had a feeling that he was going to need to shoot a, sh- a shot from this far. Like, did Dame have to shoot it from 40 feet? No, he didn't have to. I'm really glad that when, he did, though. It was awesome. I'm glad yeah. that he did, too. <laughs> it made more epic ending in. That picture, I gotta get that picture signed, like of this one waving away, so I can so I can laugh about it in ten years and fifteen. Years. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the striking thing about that shot is when he shoots it, it looks like a normal person shooting a three point shot. He's not he's not like carrying a bunch of momentum forward. His limbs aren't flying out. He's not, you know, it's uh, the mechanics. He's the not, fact that you guys do mechanics in like the craziest spots, and it just nothing breaks. Like it's like the Ray Allen, Ray yeah. Allen taking a shot and. He could be, you know, coming off a ball screen, going momentum all the way to the left, and he gets his perfect, like, body square and everything. He's like, how do you do that? I don't know. You guys are crazy. It's reps. It's, it's repetition. It's confidence. It's understanding. And then your body gets used to it. Like, have you ever – it's probably, like, a bad comparison, but have you ever driven home and, like, like did, did, I, did I stop at a red light? Yeah. Like, yeah, zone, yeah. Like, just zone out. Yeah. yeah. It's like, damn, did I turn left? Like, how did I get here? So, you know what I mean? That's how it is when you're hooping. Like, you do it every day. Like, your body just kind of takes control. And you just kind of let like let your body react to certain things. And then I'll watch the film, and I'll be like, damn, I did that. Mm-hmm. That's got to <laughs> be a like, cool experience. That's like me looking at my debit card statement on, like, a Sunday morning. No, no, but we, that – Me and you are the same. Yeah. No, but that actually happens. Sometimes <laughs> we'll do a podcast, and I'll be like, what did we talk about? Yeah, And then people true. are like, that was a great show. And it's like, I don't even remember that's what we true. talked about. People will, like, tweet us something yeah. that we said, and, and I'm, I'm like, like huh? wow, I must have blacked yeah. out and just ran my mouth off about yeah, something I don't know about. Do this all the time. 